pi i equals negative 1 is one of the most famous equations in math, but it's also one of the most confusing. Those watching this video likely fall into one of three categories. 1. You know what each term means, but the statement as a whole seems nonsensical. 2. You were lucky enough to see what this means in some long formulas explaining why it works in a calculus class, but it still feels like black magic. Or 3. It's not entirely clear what the terms themselves are. Those in this last category might be in the best position to understand the explanation I'm about to give, since it doesn't require any calculus or advanced math, but will instead require an open-mindedness to reframing how we think about numbers. Once we do this, it will become clear what the equation means, why it's true, and most importantly why it makes intuitive sense. First, let's get one thing straight. What we write as e to the x is not repeated multiplication. That would only make sense when x is a number that we can count, 1, 2, 3, and so on, and even then, you'd have to define the number e first. To understand what this function actually does, we first need to learn how to think about numbers as actions. We are first taught to think about numbers as counting things, and addition and multiplication are thought of with respect to counting. However, this mode of thinking becomes tricky when we talk about fractional amounts, very tricky when we talk about irrational amounts, and downright nonsensical when we introduce things like the square root of negative 1. Instead, we should think of each number as simultaneously being three things, a point on an infinitely extending line, an action which slides that line along itself, in which case we call it an adder, and an action which stretches the line, in which case we call it a multiplier. When you think about a number as an adder, you could imagine adding it with all numbers as points on the line all at once, but instead, forget that you already know anything about addition so that we can reframe how you think about it. Think of adders purely as sliding the line with the following rule. You slide until the point corresponding to zero ends up where the point corresponding with the adder itself started. When you successively apply two adders, the effect will be the same as just applying some other adder. This is how we define their sum. Likewise, forget that you already know anything about multiplication, and think of a multiplier purely as a way to stretch the line. Now, the rule is to fix 0 in place, and bring the point corresponding with 1 to where the point corresponding with the multiplier itself started off, keeping everything evenly spaced as you do so. Just as with adders, we can now redefine multiplication as the successive application of two different actions. The life's ambition of e to the x is to transform adders into multipliers, and to do so as naturally as possible. For instance, if you take two adders, successively apply them, then pump the resulting sum through the function, it's the same as first putting each adder through the function separately, then successively applying the two multipliers you get. More succinctly, e to the x plus y equals e to the x times e to the y. If e to the x was thought of as repeated multiplication, this property would be a consequence, but really it goes the other way around. You should think of this property as defining e to the x, and the fact that the special case of counting numbers has anything to do with repeated multiplication is a consequence of the property. Multiple functions satisfy this property, but when you try to define one explicitly, one stands out as being the most natural, and we express it with this infinite sum. By the way, the number e is just defined to be the value of this function at 1. The number isn't nearly as special as the function as a whole, and the convention to write this function as e to the x is a vestige of its relationship with repeated multiplication. The other, less natural function satisfying this property are the exponentials with different bases. Now the expression e to the pi i at least seems to have some meaning, but you shouldn't think about this infinite sum when trying to make sense of it. You only need to think about turning adders into multipliers. You see, we can also play this game of sliding and stretching in the 2D plane, and this is what complex numbers are. Each number is simultaneously a point on the plane, an adder, which slides the plane so that the point for zero lands on the point for the number, and a multiplier, which fixes zero in place and brings the point for one to the point for the number while keeping everything evenly spaced. This can now include rotating along with some stretching and shrinking. All of the actions of the real numbers still apply, sliding side to side and stretching, but now we have a whole host of new actions. For instance, take this point here. We call it i. As an adder, it slides the plane up, and as a multiplier, it turns it a quarter of the way around. Since multiplying it by itself gives negative 1, which is to say, applying this action twice is the same as the action of negative 1 as a multiplier, it is the square root of negative 1. All adding is some combination of sliding sideways and sliding up or down and all multiplication is some combination of stretching and rotating. 
Since we already know that e to the x turns slide side to side into stretches, the most natural thing you might expect is for it to turn this new dimension of adders, slides up and down, directly into the new dimension of multipliers, rotations. In terms of points on the plane, this would mean e to the x takes points on this vertical line, which correspond to adders that slide the plane up and down, and puts them on the circle with radius 1, which corresponds with the multipliers that rotate the plane. The most natural way you could imagine doing this is to wrap the line around the circle without stretching or squishing it, which would mean it takes a length of 2 pi to go completely around the circle, since by definition, this is the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its radius. This means going up pi would translate to going exactly halfway around the circle. When in doubt, if there's a natural way to do things, this is exactly what e to the x will do, and this case is no exception. If you want to see a full justification for why e to the x behaves this way, See this additional video here. So there you have it. This function e to the x takes the adder pi i to the multiplier negative 1.